Celebrating 30 years of phenomenal trend forecasting, five times a week, Monday through Friday. Here's Gerald Salenti with today's trends in the news. Hi, this is Gerald Salenti. It's Friday, June 10th, 2016, and here are some today's trends in the news. Over there in Asia, markets didn't do so well. Boop, everything down. Over there in Europe, markets didn't do so well. Down on average of 2%. Over here in the States, boop, Dow was down 170. Yeah, recouped a little bit, closed down around 120. Oil, boom, bam, down. Gold, boop, up a little bit. It's shining and glowing as everything else is going down. And there's a big trend line that's happening now that we consider you follow and listen to closely. And I'll get to it in a minute. But first, let's look at the markets and why what happened when happened. So on the oil front, the rig count went up for the second straight week. What have we been saying for how long? The higher the prices of oil go, the more rigs they're going to bring back to pump more of this stuff. Eh, so here we go. U.S. oil prices fell about 3% on Friday as the U.S. rigs online continue to rise. Baker and News said last week U.S. oil drillers added nine rigs in the week to June 3rd. Now remember, even though they added nine, just to put it into perspective, it brings the rig count now to 325. At this time last year, 635. And more sabotage over there in Nigeria. And again, that's unraveling like a lot of other places, including Venezuela. And still not back to full production up there in Alberta. And it's not so good over there in Libya. So that's on the oil front. Here's what they're talking about why the market went down. <laughs> global growth concern, renewed global growth concerns. What do they get old in one day and renew three days later? I mean, these trend lines are very clear to see. But hey, it's the markets. And you know what that is. That was bullshit. A rig game, bullshit. But anyway, that's one reason global concerns about uh, renewed global growth slowdown. Benchmark yields at record lows, as we've been talking about. Now you're talking about it's an estimated almost 30% of the countries have negative yields. It's just beyond comprehension. And another one here. It's very interesting. I think some of this today is Brexit. Some of it's global growth concerns. Some of it's the Fed. Sir John Cannelly, chief, executive, chief economic strategist at LPL Financial. Clearly, the Brexit vote has not been priced in until the last couple of days, he said. And now they're showing that the latest poll that the Leave camp is at 55 versus 45% to stay. Now, I'm mentioning this because that's the big news. EU vote throws ruling party into state of civil war. Ireland warned of wholly negative Brexit. Whether or not the UK leaves is not going to affect the fundamentals of the global economy, all right? Or as I should say, as Trump keeps saying, okay. You watch how many times he says, okay. And then you read the garbage here that they print. This whole story, not one negative element in it about Ireland, only why you should stay and not go. One-sided reporting because that's what it's all become. A vote for Britain to leave the EU will have, quote, a wholly negative effect 
on relations with Ireland, John Major and Tony Blair said yesterday. These are two former prime ministers of the UK. And what they call this guy, uh, Sir John Major, Sir John and Tony Blair. How about Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck? How about war criminal Blair and loser Major? Big time, major time. But yet they quote these people as though we are the authorities, we know what's best, and all it is is... Bullshit detected. Take precautions. The arguments made by Sir John and Mr. Blair echo those the Irish government has been making for months that a UK departure from the EU could fundamentally change the usually close historical, political, commercial, and cultural ties. Yeah, like when the English conquered the place and slaughtered the people and created that lie of the great Irish famine when they were holding food and starving. Oh, that wonderful historic, the British never, the, the, the sun never sets on the British Empire story. What a bunch of garbage. But that's what the media has become. It's a garbage pit that the prostitutes work. That's right. From Wall Street to the garbage pit, from the Beltway to the garbage pit, all they are, prostitutes putting out propaganda. A story here about the EU with the ruling party. If Britons vote to leave, most MPs believe Mr. Cameron... Of course, the Prime Minister will stand down. Even if they vote to stay in, he may face a leadership contest with Boris Johnson, the former Conservative Mayor of London, and now a leading Brexit campaigner who could win. Pro-Brexit Tories are infuriated by Mr. Cameron's campaign to keep Britain in the EU and dire warnings about the consequences of leaving. Some have openly questioned his political achievements, which are nothing, and his integrity. Nadine Dorries, a back bank bencher, accused Mr. Cameron of having, quote, lied profoundly about the possibilities of the Brexit. Hey, was it a, Obama was over there too. Was he lying profoundly? Yeah, American leaders going over there and telling them what to do as leaders of other countries have been doing. Are they lying profoundly? Of course they are. Haven't told the truth yet. If you could show it to me, always willing to look at it. Folks, my first day in office, I'm going to close Guantanamo by the end of the year. Yeah. And if you believe that one, I got a bridge in Brooklyn to sell you. Oh, but Obama couldn't do it. He didn't have the power. They wouldn't let him. That's what the little liberals say. Forgetting about the cat got us in. He's we're in Syria. He invaded Libya. All on executive order. Hey, I'm El Presidente between playing golf, shooting basketball, playing pool, and just BSing around the world. But they'll give him a free ride. Anyway, a liar's a liar, regardless of the country you live in, and they're all over the place. And Ms. Doris continues, if the Prime Minister had taken a less partisan approach and held himself above the fray, it would have been a lot better for the party, she said. Now, the only party they're interested in is the power for themselves. That's the only power they care about. Uh, on why things are so bad over there in Asia, foreign buyers flee Tokyo market. They're talking about the billions of dollars that are flooding out of Japanese equities. A third of the, uh, the investors are foreign. Nikkei is down 12% this year, 20% below its recent peak of June a year ago, which puts it into bear market territory. And many foreign investors point to a growing disappointment with Abenomics. Yep. One central bank failure after another, whether it's the US, the EU, China, Japan, nothing but failure that comes along with a bad attitude where they keep telling us what to do. The facts are here. 
Hey, and over there in Oman, joint oil rivals selling debt. The Oman government sold 2.5 billion of bonds Wednesday. And they just keep on going. Abu Dhabi, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, all selling bonds as the price of oil keeps going lower. Take a global nomic outlook to this. You're going to start seeing more and more civil unrest, regional conflict with all of these countries that are relying on natural resources to grow their economy or to stabilize it or to feed it. This is only going to be a short-term fix. So what's the other side of the story? Gold. Another trend to look at. There's a lot of positive news coming out about gold. You heard about uh, Soros buying it. Druckenmiller talking about it. Big bet of 2016. Buy gold. Miners and ETFs, front page of the money and investing section. Hey, but wait a minute. Didn't I read back in the Wall Street Journal a couple of months ago where they said, hey, if you're buying gold, it's a mistake? Well, I guess maybe they were wrong. And it goes on and on here saying how many people are buying gold, why they're buying it, because of the uncertainty and you have people like Double Line Capital's Jeffrey Goodenlock has called for gold to reach $1,400 an ounce. And you know what we've been saying. When gold hits $1,400 an ounce, stabilizes above that. And remember, we do not give financial advice. We're not telling you what to do. We're only we're trend forecasters. We believe it's going to spike to 2,000. Again, we'll go straight up, no, it'll go, you know, but the trajectory will be sharply higher. Former Fed president, all my rich friends are holding a lot of cash. This is former Dallas Bank President Fisher. He said he's worried about the $19 trillion U.S. government debt up $11 trillion since 2008. How about that? A round of applause for Obama. Yep, $11 trillion in eight years. And what have we got for it? 1% got it. 95% got that. Why big investors think it's time to hoard gold? Oh, CNBC. The other one I read to you, that was from Forbes. And the one before that was Wall Street Journal. When you see the mainstream media, I remember when they wouldn't even report gold prices. All right? Or I should say, okay. I'll be a Trump, okay. Gold futures for August hit a three-week high Thursday, raising blah, 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 blah. The yellow metal is up about 20% the year. As far as the geopolitical element, it's certainly, not a, it's certainly not a chicken little atmosphere, said Jim Steele, chief commodities analyst for HSBC. HSBC, I think there's enough uncertainty facing the global economy and even some geopolitical tensions to keep buying the gold market. And despite all the dough they spent, the facts are here. And now everyone else is admitting it. And I'm saying the dough they spent with quantitative easing zero interest rate policy, and now negative interest rate policy. The negative interest rate policy has, every, has, has the financial markets blown away. They don't know what to do with it. You're not getting any yields. And that's why people are going into gold. And the banks can't make any money with negative interest rates. Economists see slower job growth. Forecasters have lowered their expectation for job growth in the coming year. This is the third consecutive month of lowered expectations for job outlook. Their estimates fell from 180,000 in May, 185,000 in April, and 190,000 in March. They keep lowering it as it keeps getting worse rather than looking ahead to see how it's going to move. For now, economists generally think the U.S. 
will be able to avoid tilting all the way into recession. They see on average a 21% chance of being in recession. A 21% chance. It's a global slowdown. And there's no end of it in sight. The Fed, the central banks around the world have shot their wad. The only thing they could come up with again, as we see it, is quantitative easing. Shoveling more money back into the economy. Now, I'm putting this together again in a global nomic sense because we also have the presidential reality show in the United States heating up big time. Never in modern history has there been such a contentious election like this, where you're seeing fights between the two parties on the streets, pro people attacking each other from the different camps. The language coming out from both sides, from Trump and Clinton, Sanders, Warren, all the people out there on either side, I've never heard language so low in my life. So when I say bullshit, take it easy, because they're really throwing it out there big time. I'm mentioning this because there's an opportunity for this economy to collapse before the presidential elections. There's a high probability of global economic turmoil before the presidential elections. And do you know what will happen? Well, you know. When all else fails, they take you to war. This is Gerald Salenti, and that's some of today's Trends in the news.